And they wanted to zoom this summer when we were on parking and we had to zoom in and And we ended up having these Jim's laptop and my desktop wouldn't zoom. I don't know. I don't know if I would zoom in. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, we'll figure it out. I mean, the other thing is that we don't necessarily have to meet here. We can meet at my house or, I mean, there's lots of options. So we'll, we'll figure something out. So this, uh, I've highlighted these three here, the cattails in the, uh, the PL, uh, just because I realized that Ben Pelt really likes them on his tests. Oh. So that's my exam hint. Which shows the? The PL, yeah. imperative, infinitive construct, infinitive absolute. Oh, you're giving this to he, and well, he really likes to emphasize that the PEL goes to the ka tell. Yeah. So he has a number of those on the parsing exam. Right. Well, I'm not so, yeah. Confused. So today we have Hiffield, which to keep our little thing going, although there's, it goes to, uh, so we've got, oops, stole my markers. Oh, nope, I just misplaced them. So we've got Ictiel, uh, and it's a here at Yo. So we got Ictiel, and then we've also got, uh, well, if it can go to an A class vowel, so Hictal, if it's in like Hictalta, um, and then here we have uh, Yachtiel, it's still that. I've been doing my vowels in different colors and forgot about them. We'll go through this all over again. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, Yachtiel. So this is the uh, this is the key, as it were, to the Hiffiel is that short a under the preformative. So here we've got an i. Here we've got an i with the dagesh, but immediately followed by the comments. Here we've got the schwa followed by a patak, the schwa followed by a u class, and then ya. So the a is the giveaway. In this particular uh, this particular stem, so that's that's what we're looking for in the uh, in the for diagnosing it, which is then the same for imperative, which is double <coughs> yeah, which is. And then it can either be teal or it can be tail. Either one, either hock teal or hock tail, that long uh, vowel. And then, as always, that's the same for the infinitive construct all the way across. And the infinitive absolute is the same, although the infinitive absolute really likes the, the long e if it has the option. Uh, and then we get to the participle, then we've got mock teal. So a lot of times people will say, which is accurate, that what gives the hiffiel away is that the hiric yod that shows up after the second root letter, which is certainly true. Uh, we do, I mean, you can see all the, all the, hier the hieric yodes in almost every, uh, every form. The, diff the difficulty, though, is that it goes to that A class when you put suffixes on it. People often forget that. So really what's the giveaway in most of them is the fact that you've got a patak under the preformative or under that first hey. That's, that's really the giveaway, except in the 
So in the perfect, we have a hyphial hictial, which then goes to A class hictalta if we add a suffix onto hictial. And then the rest of them all start with that patak, which is, that's the, that's the giveaway. Um, on the weak side of it, it's pretty much the same, except that uh, instead of the heric in the perfect, uh, we get a segol if it starts, if the root starts with a guttural, because rather than the two schwas combining, the schwa that's under the kof and the schwa from the hay and the, that one becoming the heric, instead the kof letter would be the guttural and that would have a compound schwa. And when a schwa and a compound schwa combine, the schwa doesn't take a heric like it does in hictiel it takes whatever vowel is part of that compound schwa, which is usually a segel. So you get hectiel rather than hictiel. Still an I-class vowel, you still get that uh, random patak that shows up in the other uh, parts of that stem or of that conjugation, but you usually have the heric yod. So you'll still know it's a hyphial, it's just instead of a short I, it's an E. Uh, the rest of them though still have the Patak all the way through, which is nice. It also means that the, on the rest of them, the schwa that would be under the kof, if the kof was a guttural, will be a patak schwa. Whereas in the first one, the hictiel, it will be segel schwa, um, which isn't a huge deal. It just, that's part of why it changes. Um, the, let's see, there was one other one I wanted to call attention to. Uh, so the, uh, the one yod verbs, um, this is the one, let me see. Uh, I thought that I had a slide here. Maybe it's under Hafel. So when you have a yod as the first root letter, so if the yod is where the kof is, uh, if that's a yod, then as we have seen, the yod will drop out and become go back to being above. The difference is that in the nifal, when it went being back to being a vav, it became a full consonant. So if the word was niktal or niktil uh, in the nifal, but, uh, but you had the kof there was a yod, then it became, uh, in the imperfect, it became nivatel. And the vav became a full, uh, the yod here, if the yod was the kof, the yod becomes a full vav in a one yod verb. So like um, yashav, to sit. Instead of it being uh, yisha, no, yeah, yashav, it becomes yo shav. Uh, but in the, uh, in the nifal, it becomes a full consonant. So instead of it being yo shave, it becomes yiv shave. And the vav is actually a consonant. Does it never act as a vowel letter in the nifal? Not in the nifal, it's always a consonant. I think in the perfect, it can be a vowel, but it's no, so no tall. But in the rest of them, it's a full vowel because it has to carry that comments that gives away the fact that you're dealing with a nifal. So nivatel and nivatel, nivatel, nivatol, even here, nivatal, it still shows up there. In the hyphial, it always ends up as a whole and vav. Now, one of the nice things about, if you want to call it that, is that we have three, we have three stems here, nifal, 
Pifiel, and Hoffal, those three react fairly weirdly to the first yod vowels, uh, the first yod consonant. But all three of them react differently, so we're able to point to the, what the yod became and identify what the stem must be. So here it goes to Holumbav, no katal. All the rest, it's a full consonant. It's a V in all the rest of these. The yod becomes a vav. In the hifiel, the yod becomes a holum vav, but it stays a holum vav in all of these. So here you have hoktiel instead of no katal. But then when this switches back to a full consonant with nivatel, this one continues with that Yo, so yoke teal, hoke teal, moke teal. So if you have an O, it's a hifiel. If you have a full vav, it's a nifal. If it's a u, it's a hafal. And the way to remember that is that when we do hafal on Thursday, hafals are sometimes kufals because hafal is a short O. Because it's that O U class. Well, yodes don't take short vowels. They take long vowels. Segel, hey is about as close as they come, and here at yodes technically a short hyric with a long, so it's a long vowel. But it won't be comets hatuf yod. It changes and combines and becomes a full shurik. So the shurik will be the giveaway in this one. Huktal, yuktal, huktal, muktal. This one is hoktil, yoktil, hoktil, moktil. This one is yivatel, hivatel, hivatel, hivatol, hiv, nivatol. So full vav, whole vav, sure. So that's the that's the giveaway for those those one yod verbs, and it as we saw with the. Um, with the, uh, with the cow verbs, sometimes the yod drops out and there's a holum. Sometimes the yod becomes hirik yod. So sometimes we get yiktol instead of yiktol, and sometimes we get yoktol instead of iktol, but it's always just a holum. It, it's not going back to that holum vav. That's hifiel. Hifiel is holum vav. That's the chart for the strong verbs. Um, the, I'm on uh, slide 17. It's, uh, it's the one yod verb diagnostic chart. Um, and you'll see where it, it just says, uh, Hoshiv, Yoshiv. Okay. Dave, that's where that, that Holum Vav comes in, is right, right there after the hay. And it'll still take the mem for the participle, so it becomes moshiv or moktil to use our katal form. It just seems like the book has, you know, the diagnostic examples. Yes. And on the practice test, everything was weak verbs. Yes, he likes to do that. He's, uh, he's, he's kind of annoying that way. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm looking at the perfect group and trying to figure out because he didn't get perfect. Mm-hmm. Um so how do you differentiate that with the other one? When you use our sound point for the gap here to the group, how do you distinguish between that and the A that you talked about with the mm -hmm. sound? Yep. And because you is the one we talked about. Right. Um, Yes. Yes. That's the only one I can like, look at. Like, ooh, what? What am I going to be looking for? Mm-hmm. That I'm right. The so the way to tell the imperfect one nun weak verb apart from nifals or pls, uh, which is I have to admit is challenging. Uh, Know, uh, uh, or something for the right. 
Yes. So some of it is vocab of, okay, what words could I possibly have here? Uh, some of it, though, is, okay, I've got a hiric yod, yatzil, but lamed is not a suffix. And yod, the hay, will only become a yod before another hay. Um, is that right? No, before a tav. Right? Yeah, it only becomes a yod before a, uh, a tav. Yeah, because it'll drop out completely before shurik. I think it might become a yod before a nun as well. It becomes a tav before a hay. Yeah. Uh, so there's only those two stem or two forms. You've got the, uh, you know, where you, where you have the yod that shows up instead of the hay on a third hay verb, which helps. Yes. Um, the uh, the other thing is that in the hip field, the giveaway is the patak under the yod. Uh, so if you look at the chart, it's yat seal. And this is why when I went through and memorized them when I was in seminary, I just learned them as anytime you see a hiric yod, it's a hip field. Well, not always. Because as I said, sometimes it goes with the E class and becomes a say ready, like hock tail for the infinitive absolute and for the imperative. And occasionally in the perfect even, it'll become hock tall, like hock talta, where you add on the suffix and it becomes an A class and all of a sudden your here yod is gone. It's like, how do I identify this? And really the identifier is that, that patak that shows up under the, under the preformative. So each preformative in each stem has its own distinct characteristic. The hith pael, it's hit. In the pl and the pu'al, it's a vocal schwa followed either by a u-class or a uh, a-class. In the hifiel, it's a patak. You just have to remember that the patak is under the preformative, not the second letter. It's not vocal schwa patak. It's patak. Patak comes first in the hifiel. Um, so in all of the forms, with the exception of the perfect, in all of those forms, it has that A class, short A vowel. And, and that's, that's really the giveaway. Now, occasionally, that A class will lengthen every once in a while, but rarely. Um, so it stays as that short A. That's the, that's the giveaway. Um, I was putting together, let me see if I can find it here. I'm trying to think where I saved it. Let's see, current. So uh, I was just kind of messing around because I was bored. And I, I created, and I'll hand this out on uh, Thursday, and I'll email it out. But I was trying to figure out, okay, if I was going to memorize something for the exam, what would I memorize? And I, again, said I would memorize all the perfects. Katal, miktal, ketel, kutal, hiktil. I memorize all those, which you already know, because it's cow, nifal, pl, puel, hifil, hitpael. It's the name, so you already know all the perfects. I would memorize all the imperfects. Uh, yiktol, yikatel, yakatel, yakatel, yakutal, yaktil, or you could memorize them in that using that uh, paal form. So yafel, yapael, yapuel. You know, however you want to memorize it, but that imperfect column. Uh, the imperative, I would memorize in the nifal, because it's got the hey, which is kind of weird. 
I would make sure that I'm familiar with the fact that in the imperfect, the, um, the, the, when the ya drops, then I'm left with kof a class vowel, not i class vowel. So, but if I memorize my imperfect, I should be able to remember that because the imperative is just the imperfect having dropped that. Uh, I would also remember that most of the time, the infinitive construct is the same as the imperative to ms. So our imperative column and our infinitive construct column, they're the same. So I don't really need to memorize the infinitive construct. I don't really even need to memorize the imperative because the imperative is just the, is the imperfect with that dropped off. I might want to memorize the, um, the infinitive absolute um, in the cal and the participle just because they're odd. Um, both the fact that I have a passive participle, katul, and a active participle, kotel. And because the infinitive absolute is just slightly different from the infinitive construct, instead of katol with the vocal schwa on the kof in the infinitive construct, I have katol. I actually have a full vowel there, a comments. So I would probably want to learn most of the cal. Those two columns, perfect and imperfect. Remind myself that the nifal imperative has a hey, and that the nifal infinitive absolute uh, can either have a hey or a nun. Uh, and then I'd want to learn my, remember that the participle in the PEL and following has a mem, a mem prefix. Um, that's about it. I don't know that I'd learn much more than that. I guess the, yeah, no, I was going to say even the, in, the infinitive construct, even in the um, infinitive construct, infinitive absolute, I mean, you could remember that the absolute is going to have a say, right? But really, it's just the top line, the two left columns, and the fact that I have a hey in the nifal in three of the forms. The rest of it you can all you can kind of figure out based on the other the other forms. So then besides that, then what I want to memorize is the what the yod does in the nifal, hifil, and hafal, that it's a full consonant in the nifal. If the nun is present, then it's a whole involved. It's no, whatever, but the fact that there's a nun there gives it away. No. In the Hifil and Hofal, it's Holombav and Ashurik, which are the giveaway. Uh, remember that the mem is on the participle. And then memorize what the hey, third hey does in the different stems. So perfect is Kamet's hey, imperfect is Segel hey, imperative is Seire hey, infinitive construct is Oat. Participle is single hey. Yeah. No, the only thing I would say that's evil, and it's not really evil, he likes to pick obscure forms. Uh, so there's a couple that are obscure. I'm slowly hitting them in class. Um, and then um, there is a couple parsings that are, have object endings on them. Yeah, to know the phenomenal suffix endings. Yeah. Different from right. Yep. I th if I, I'm trying to remember, I think the way that it's set up, actually, I don't know why I'm trying to remember. I got the exam right here. Um, so he's got a, yeah, there's a bunch of, um, there's a, of, yeah, there's probably like 
15 parsings. None of them have pronominal suffixes on them. I don't think, oh, actually I take that back. One or two of them do, but not a lot. And then he's got 15 parsings. None of them have pronominal suffixes. And then I've got what, 15 parsings and they're only cow weak verbs. Yeah, but it's, it's only cow. I mean, there's a couple weak verbs, but it's all weak verbs, but it's only cow. So, the last uh, thing to draw your attention to in the hyphial, just because it's rather bizarre, is in the biconsonantal stem. That's where instead of having a patak, there is a comments. Which doesn't really throw us because we've never had a comments before. Because comments is a cal perfect. This is imperfect. So basically everything lengthens. So instead of here at Yod, thick teal, it's hey Kate. Uh, because there is no third letter in a biconsonant, there's only two. So there's no Hirik Yod. If there is, it's hey Keet. And the Hirik Yod shows up in between the Kof and the Tav because there's only two. But that first vowel, the Hirik, lengthens to become a Seire. So instead of short vowels all the way through, Hirik, Patak, 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 it's Seire, Comets, Comets, Comets. But we don't have any form of the verb that has a comet. We have a comet's hatuf, which we'll look at in the hafal. But in order to have that, you have to have a closed syllable. So you'll have a you'll have a schwa. It won't be hey keet. It would be hake, and then t, because you can't you can't have a short vowel in an open syllable. So if that first syllable is open, then it has to be a comments, which is far more common. Uh, the only one that's really weird in that is that because it becomes a long vowel, it's then subject to reducing, which we've avoided because all of these are short vowels and short vowels don't reduce. So it doesn't matter what we put onto the end of any of these in terms of suffixes, you never affect the beginning of the word because it's a full syllable. We've got the dagesh in the nifal, hik, katel. So we've never had to worry about it there. We've got a short vowel in the pl. We've got a short vowel in the hifil. We've never had to worry about reduction because they're all short. Well, once we make the hirik in hiktil, once we make that a seire, and once we make all the pataks comments, is now we've opened the possibility of having it reduce to a schwa, a vocal schwa, but reduce to a schwa. The only one that it really shows up in is in the perfect when you add a, um, a suffix on the end. Um, because if you remember way back when, when we talked about the cow, the, the biconsonantal verbs have this habit of throwing a holum vav in instead of the second letter. So savav, instead of it being savav and adding savav ta, it might be savota and it drops that second letter and throws in the whole Bob instead, which is weird, I admit. Um, so that happens again in the hyphial. So we might get kimota, but then when you put, instead of hik kimota, we have hey kimota, but the hey is too far away now. So it becomes ha kimota and that say ray reduces to a vocal schwa, mm -hmm. which is really weird. So if you wanna grab your workbook,
and flip to, um, let's see. Let's see page Two eighty one. Nope, two eighty two. Nope, two eighty three. Number eighty four and eighty five there. Hakimota and Hakimoti. Eighty four and eighty five. Now you have two giveaways. One is the fact that you have a hiric yod in a verb that is not a verb that normally has a hiric yod there. So it's kum, but we have a hiric yod in the middle, which is that's the first giveaway that we're not dealing with a cow. We're dealing with a hifiel here, but because of the shifting of all the consonants and because uh, accents and because the fact that we put a say ray originally under the hay, because we lengthen that hiric when we have a, uh, we have a biconsonantal verb, because of that, we have a vocal schwa under the hay, which we look at that and we're like, oh, that must be a pl, except that there is no prefix with a hay in the pl. So, that's where we have to keep in mind the hey will occasionally, only in the biconsonantal verbs, will have that compound schwa because everything has reduced. It's reduced from a sere down to a vocal schwa. It's the only place that that happens because we don't get reduction usually. You'd have to have a weird, a weird set of circumstances and usually because of the, I'm sure there's some rule, I never learned them about what order you go in in terms of lengthening and reducing and all that. But on all the other things, even when it rejects dogishes and you lengthen things, I think that happens after you reduce everything. So if we lengthened our prefix vowels because the first root letter wouldn't take a uh, a dogesh, then we still wouldn't reduce it like this. This is the only time we'll see that reduction. That's from that biconsonantal, that's from that weird. Yes. Um, Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Yep. Yep. So number 84 is 2MS. Number 85 is 1CS. And it has that connecting vowel that is the whole Um Let me pull it up here. That would have been lesson. Thirteen, I think, maybe. Let's find out. Nope. I need to do a better job of labeling my uh, notes because just labeling it as class 14 doesn't really do any good if I can't remember what I taught in class 14. Um, Fifteen. 
don't miss that idea. The only other one that has that Right, because the comments underneath. Yeah. Um, Less than 10, maybe? is it um, yeah so uh, geminates and biconsonantal um, although looks like mostly geminates although biconsonantal obviously do it too so they will put a um, actually they only do it before the hard um, those hard endings that start either with a tav or a nun, they will put in a holum vav. I think they only do it here. Um, because kam is a, a kum, that is not a, um, that's not a gemini, that's a biconsonantal form. Um, so I, th I think it's just here. Why, I, the, I don't know why it does it here, because it doesn't do it anywhere else except the hyphial. Yeah. Um, it's very odd, yeah. Carl? Um. Uh, yes? I'm sorry. Um, could you, on number 83 again? Um. Mm -hmm. Yes, so number 83, is uh, that's a vav that's acting as a full consonant. And the one way that we can remember that that's not really supposed to be a vav is that the tav is the prefix, which means that the vav would be the first root letter. And we don't have any verbs that start with vav. We have a noun, vav, okay. uh, but we don't ever have verbs that start with vav. So this is actually a, a yod that has gone back to being a, a, a vav, which is what historically it was. It's gone back to that, and it only will do that, uh, it'll do it occasionally in the cow, but mostly in the nifal, the hifial, and the hafal. In the nifal, it becomes that full consonant, which is what we see here. And it does that so that it can take that comments underneath the vav, which is what you need part of the nifal imperfect form, the ni uh, fail. So this would be a, okay. a uh, F -E two F three FS, two FS, two FS. I think it's a two FS. Two FS. Yeah. Uh, and so this would be a nifal imperfect. Okay. On 84 and 85, these are hyphials, and because it's either a biconsonantal or a geminate, it has taken the holum vav instead of the reappearance of the second letter. Although in a biconsonantal, there is no third letter. In a geminate, you'll have a holum vav, and then it puts a dagesh in the second root letter to tell you there is a third letter. But that only happens in the hyphial and the cal. I think I mentioned way back when that the only two stems or the two stems that you'll most struggle to tell apart are cal and hyphial. Um, and so that those take some extra work to kind of reason through what it is. Uh, and part of the reason is they share some of the same similarities of the whole and Bob showing up uh, after the after the second root letter. That's a, that's a hyphial thing. So 84 and 85 are both hyphials. Number 86 is the same as 83, but 86 is a hyphial, whereas 83 is a nifal, because in 86 you see the holum vav, 
and the holum vav is a sign again of the hyphial. And the confirmation there is the hyric yod in the in between the second and third root letters. Um, so we have we have uh, hodia, uh, but that again that's a yod in front of the dalit that Yod has gone back to the historical Vav. So the drops the vowel, the right. So the, the Hay's vowel has combined with the Yod, or more technically, the Shva, the vocal Shva, that is really standing behind all of these single vowels has combined with the Yod to make the Holom Vav. And on 83, it's not, that's actually the boundary. It, yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. If there's any other mark on a shurik, then it has to be a vav with a dagesh. So That's 83, right, because right, okay. it wouldn't be a vowel with a vowel. <gasps> yep. So if you see a vowel underneath it, yep. And they've, the saluk there, or excuse me, the metheg that's next to the, uh, to the, comments there is reminding you that it's not a kamatatuf, which we wouldn't technically be tempted to think of anyway because there's no form that has a kamatatuf there. We really only end up with kamatatufs in three cases, an accent shift in a vowel where we had a U or an O already, like kum, so if we shift the accent to vayakom, the U becomes a short letter because the accent is no longer on that last syllable. Because it's not vayakam, it's vayakam. And you can't have a long A in a closed syllable unaccented. So it has to go back to being a U or an O, a comment set to us. We also get them in certain imperatives. If we, um, adds if we add on a um if we add on a uh, uh a suffix but it really only happens in the cal because the cal is the only one that really has anything there that would mess and become that comma tatuf um so in the imperative we might have um uh coat coat la or, or coat lot or coat lee or coat loo um, where it gets that comment uh, to and then the other place is the half out so we don't really need a meth egg there to remind us that it's not a comment to but they put it there anyway just to remind us which is nice of them if they did it all the time but we can't really rely upon that because they're very very inconsistent with that. Oh. Uh, well, let's flip back to let's go to page two forty eight. Most of these are hyphial, but as he says, a few are cal. Let's do number three. Amidu. He amidu. So, what is the stem? Uh, that's the root. Oh. Yeah, that's okay. What's the stem? Cal, hifal, nifal, pl, puel, hifal, hafal. Hifal, yes. Why is there a segol under the hay? Yes, guttural is the first root letter. It has a compound schwa, and instead of having a hyric, it takes the vowel of that compound schwa. Um, same with number uh, with number four, although what's different with number four that it took a 
Hotak rather than a Segel. Yes, number four is imperfect, whereas number three is perfect. So in the perfect, it will be a Segel. Everywhere else, it's the Patak, which is easy to remember because it will simply take whatever the vowel is of the compound schwa. And for whatever reason, the compound schwa takes Segel and perfect. I don't know why, but. Um, what about number eight? What do you see? Okay, Dagash Forte in the shin. What's my vowel pattern? I don't like the color spirit. Okay, well, the comets is your friend in this case. So we have a hear it, comets, say right. My brain was different in the comets. It, uh, it, uh, ailed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what stem is this? If we have it, uh, a. Nifal. Yes, anytime you see a hiric followed by a comets followed by a seire, it will be a fail. Except here it's not yit a fail, it's hit a fail. Why do we have hit? Because it's the imperative. Yes? Construct. Yep, so it could be an imperative, it could be an infinitive construct. Would not be an infinitive absolute because that's. Let's hit a look. Uh, how about number 11? Vyash Lake. What is the root? my three consonant root there. Yes, which means, Donna? Oh, throw. <laughs> <laughs> descend, yes, to throw, descend, descend away, cast off, yes. Yeah, depending on what list you're looking at, yes. Um, so, and uh, what is the preformative? What's under the preformative there? Under the yod? Patak, and if I've got a, a patak under my preformative, it must be a if you, yep. And as confirmation, I have a long I or E as my second root letter, um, which, which confirms it. Yeah, you could either put hifil by toll, you could put hifil in perfect with a bob consecutive. Either way. Uh, yeah, that's, I like to use by by toll, if I by toll, and you say it all at the same time, you don't have to worry about splitting it up. What about number 13? Eshlacha. Yes, sir? It is a regular cow. Regular cow yes, a just a regular cow and perfect. Yes. What is the comet's hay at the end there? Yeah, it's eshlacha. But the form is eshlach. Or esh, eshlok, I guess, because it'd be yiktol. So the comet's hay at the end is not that's, we don't need that, so what is it there for? Mm -mm. 
Well, I suppose it could. Yeah. Yep. So now this, it would be. So is the root one? It is. Yep. The key to this is remember that we're in a first person form. So this would be a marker potentially of the cohortative. Yes, I always forget about those two. So again, Van Pelt mentions it and it annoys me that he has it all over the place because he, he bases it off a word order for a cohortative and then he gives you all the forms that have the comments hey at the, at the end. Yeah, which I was taught comments hey was a cohortative, but he mentions that it could be, but then he doesn't, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, let me see here. Um, I didn't bring a lot of paper with me. Never mind. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. So that one, um, that was a. I ask you a question about that one? Yes. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, so looking at that, um, how, it's not a 3FS perfect. So yeah. what yeah. am I missing? To, what's the key to know that it's not? Yeah, the key there is the Aleph Segol at the beginning of the verb. That's the marker for the one CS imperfect. Okay. So that would, that would tell you that it's an imperfect, not a perfect. Um, theoretically, if you wanted to go theoretical, uh, theoretically you could have a, um, a three FS object at the end, but it would have a, uh, of a peak, which looks like a dogesh in it, to tell you that it's um, let me see if I can find it here. Um, um, and actually, in the uh, in the objects, it's usually not comments. Hey, it's usually the comments is under the hey. Uh, that's the seems to be the more popular form. Uh, but you can have the comments hey, but the comments hey will have the uh, will have that that dogesh in it. Um, so we know it's not an object because there's no mapik, There's no dogesh in the hey. Um, so it can't be an object, and since it's a one CS form, that it's emphasizing the cohortative. Um, so th again, this is the this is the uh, I don't know if you want to call it the frustration of Hebrew, but the the joy of Hebrew I'll call it is that every Hebrew professor has their own opinions on probably about fifteen to twenty different things. You know, do you call it a vav consecutive or do you call it a viatol? Do you call it a, yeah, just all of them, you know, are, is perfect imperfect? Is that tense or is it aspect or what is it? Uh, and this is a similar one. Uh, Van Pelt wants you to base the cohortative based off of syntax, where it is in the sentence. If it comes first, it's a cohortative. When I learned, my professor taught us if you see a first person form with a comments, hey, at the end, that's a cohortative. Uh, the problem is neither of those is foolproof. <laughs> so that's where we're kind of left with, well, what is it? Um, my guess is on his answer sheet, he probably labels this a cohortative, but that's not what he said in his book. He just mentions it in passing. So he's being tricky here. Um, so the, when I see a comments, hey, at the end of a verb like this, I look at the beginning of the verb first. Okay. And see, do I have a prefix? Uh, because then that tells me what exactly am I dealing with. If I have no prefix, then I know I have a cal, or, or not a cal, I have a perfect verb. Okay, and, uh, okay that's a 3FS cal verb. But if I have a prefix, 
then that comete has to become something else. Uh, similar to if I'm at the end of a word and I have a yod, I have to ask myself, okay, that could be an object. It could also be a perfect verb. It could also be an imperfect verb. But the only way to know that is to look back at the beginning of the verb and see if there's that prefix. Um, and so that's where you want to check. And that's where it helps to have the vocab because I'm able to look at that and say, okay, I know shalak is the root, shin, lam, and chetz. So now I can eliminate those three and figure out, okay, aleph is not part of the root. It's part of the stem. It's the one CS prefix. Okay. Uh, how about 16? It is a PL imperfect. Yep. Um, because we've got the Tav with the vocal Schwa. On that one, we have, because it's a Tav, we have to go to the end of the verb and see, okay, what is the end of the verb? And in this case, the end of the verb is a Yod. So Tav plus a Yod tells me that this is 2FS. Uh, how about number 18? It is not. What, what, what is the 18? What is the root? Uh-huh. And what is under the preformative? Patak, so it must be a hyphial. Yeah. So this is where memorizing those, those prefix vowels. What's that? No, it doesn't. It only has the H on the, uh, the perfect and then shows up again in the imperative but not on the imperfect. Yep. None of the, um, well, even the hith pael will lose the hay, and it'll be yit pael in the imperfect. Because the, the, in the perfect, we have nuns for nifal, we have hays for hifal and hafal. We lose all of that in the imperfect. The only prefix that we have is the yod, the tav, the aleph, the nun, um, those are what tells us that, hey, we're dealing with something different. Uh, and then we have to go with the vowel, which in this case is a patak. Because um, number 19 is the same, but it's a perfect. So the hey comes back in the perfect, it's there. Uh, and then we have the new at the end, so that's one CP. And you can see the difference between 18 and 19, the segol, seire, or whatever, acts different with the aleph in each case, which is annoying because we would expect the seire as well in number 17. Um, sorry, yes, number 18. We would expect the seire there as well, but we don't get it in the imperfect. Um, how about 25? What do you see? What is the first letter? Bait. Bait. So there are only two times that we ever don't start with a preformative. 
That's if we're in a cal perfect, because an if out perfect has a none, if out perfect has a hey, if out, p l perfect, pu out perfect, those as well. But we've got dagashes everywhere in pls and pu uh, or imperatives. But what is at the end of this verb? Yes, top comments, which is. Imperfect? Imperfect or prefixes. So this would be. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Perfect. Perfect, yes. So this is a perfect 2MS ending without the mapik, which drops out in this form. So if that's the case, then we know we're in a perfect. So we only have three perfects that don't have preformatives PL, PUAL, and CAL. PL and PUAL start with hiric or kamatatuf, but then what would they have put in the nun? Yep. Usually they will. They won't in a, in a guttural. So that only leaves me with a cal. The hiric yod is the hay before a tav. Yep, before tav, before a nun, the hay becomes a hiric yod. So he threw this one in here to make sure that you didn't do what I did when I was in seminary, and that is memorize everything with a hiric yod must be a hifiel, because that's not the case. It's the case if there's a preformative with a patak or a hay uh, with a hiric, but just because there's a yod, hiric yod, there are other reasons for that. So this is just a cal perfect to MS from Bana to build. Uh, and remind me again if I don't say this before the exam, but I've been, I'm kind of going back and forth on, on parsing. If I am going to require you to put the uh, the definition of the word when you parse. Um, I, it seems silly to have that and have 50 vocab. It seems kind of, it just makes it too long of an exam to have 50 vocab plus 50 parsing, which is really 100 vocab. I, that just seems silly. So I'm leaning towards, I want you to identify the root so tell me that it's bait nun hay. And I think I'm just gonna do some form of extra credit if you can give me the dictionary, you know, what the definition is. Yeah, I just yeah, I it just seems silly to double double test something. Because my, my goal is just to make sure that you know everything. So you can look it up in a lexicon. Yep. Yes. So I've already got a section on vocab, which you could also look up in a lexicon, not for the exam, but in real life. And so that's more to keep you accountable to learning your vocab. Once you get to the root, and as I said, not to scare you and terrify you, although we're going to get into this exegesis, just because you memorized a word doesn't mean that you know everything there is to know about that word. I mean, perfect example, I was joking around with Donna earlier about shalak, meaning to send. Um, if when I look at the word shalak, the, the final cough, or yeah, it looks like a, uh, it looks like a, a dalit. We don't have a final form of dalit, but it looks like a dalit with just a long letter. So it actually looks like the word salad if you were to read it in in English, because it's shalad. So I always remember it as toss because you toss a salad. I've never heard it as send. So when Donna put send on her vocab exam, I knocked it wrong because I've never heard of that. And I, I Googled it because I, whenever I come across a word, I'm always like, like I could, 
Like I could kind of see how you could get send out of that, but I thought I don't know that send is an option because shalak sounds like shalak with a hate at the end, which does mean to send. And so I thought, oh, she got the two mixed up. But just to be sa safe, I Googled it and whatever lexicon popped up did not have send as an option, but Van Pelt has it in his book as send. So there, right. So there are forms of verbs and there are multiple definitions of verbs. And some of them, you guys have done a good job of learning the multiple versions that he gives you on the cards. But sometimes there's even versions that he hasn't given you. Um, and I, sometimes, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty far in my vocabulary. I, I forget how many, I think it's down to like seven occurrences is where I'm down to as I've been doing this for years, uh, trying to get as low as I can get. But there are some words where I'm just now figuring out, no wonder I miss it every time it's the same word. Because if, I mean, I might go months between, you know, uh, kara to meet and kara, uh, koth, resh, hey, to happen. I, you know, I might go months between the two of them and I'm like, oh, I, thought, I thought that was to meet. Oh, oh well. And then it's not until I miss them enough that they end up in my mist pile and they get close enough together in the mist pile that I realize they're the same word. Uh, so I, there, there's another one. Um, I think it's, um, I think it's hasha, which just sounds like hasha, like hush up. So it's to be quiet. And that's actually what it means. But it also means to search. But I've got some cards that say to search and I've got some cards that say to be quiet. And it wasn't until about a month ago that I ended up with a card that had both of them on it. Uh, so sometimes, okay, you know the vocab, great. You may not know the right vocab. And that's just because language is like that of, you know, shut up is now in the dictionary because it has multiple definitions. So according to Webster's, ever since the movie Princess Diaries, it is now a, a, a shout of surprise. Shut up. So they actually had to put that in the dictionary because we now use it differently. So we do that in English too. Uh, so that's why to have vocab on the root parsing would seem a little artificial. So I'm just gonna have you put the three letter root and then uh, I'll give you extra credit for knowing your vocabulary. I'll give you extra credit if you can identify the English of the root. Um, so here, if you didn't know that it was build and you just put bana, bait, nun, hey, that's enough to help you find it in a, in a lexicon. And then you can look it up and figure out which of the, however many definitions it, uh, bana, I think only, only has one or two, so. Uh, not, not too, not too scary there. Uh, how about 28? Very good, because? Hatak under the yod. Yep, so it's a hit feel. Why is there a segel hey? Okay, if it's a comment, say it's perfect. If it's a segel, hey, it's imperfect or a participle, but a participle doesn't have a yod at the beginning. So this would be imperfect. Uh, third, hey, verbs in their 3MS form are really nice. They're not so nice in their other forms, but in the 3MS, they're really nice because that hey tells you what, what, uh, what form you're in. Although yod is kind of a giveaway anyway, but. Uh, uh, this would be rava to multiply. Um, how about 30? Mar beam. So this is a participle. Uh-huh. participle. Yep. Masculine plural. Yep. Yep. 
Now, this is a tricky one in the sense of we've got the heric yod here, but the heric yod is not the heric yod of a hyphial. It is the heric yod of the, yes, of the hay before the mem. So this is, yes, so this is a masculine plural participle. This is not just uh, a, um, the Hiric Yod from the Hifil. Uh, okay, on the next section, let's go down to number four. What is the vowel under my first root letter? Mm -hmm. And what comes after the comments? What vowel? And what comes before it? Say right. It, what is, where would I possibly have something like say right comments say right? The comments is the big giveaway, but say right comments, say right. Say right is, is that a long vowel or a short vowel? Okay, so is this? Say right is a long vowel. Do I typically have long vowels or short vowels under preformatives? Usually short vowels. So something lengthened. So what would have lengthened to a say right? Not an Aleph. Say raise an I class. So what vowel would that have been? What would be a short I? What's a short I? Hear it. So where would I have Hear it, comment, say ray. It, uh, ale. Not a P ale, because that would be a vocal schwa. A nifal, ni a uh, fail. But in a nifal, the nun assimilates into the first letter, but it can't, because it's a guttural. So can't take the dogash. So instead it lengthens to say right. But really the giveaway is the comments. If I see a comments under my first root letter when I have a preformative, 99.9% .9 of the time it's going to be a nifal. So I start there. And I say, and, and that, I mean, there are always exceptions, but at least when you learn the Vocal schwa is a pia, vocal schwa is a pu'al. You know, the hiric is a hifil or nifal. You know, at least if you learn that, uh, you know, I've got a patak, so it must be a hifil. At least start there. And then you can begin to reason through, okay, so if that's a nifal, what else would I have expected? Well, I would have expected a assimilated nun because we don't have preformatives in the imperfect nuns and hays and all that because we have yods and tabs in the verb form. So where'd the nun go? Huh, it should have been a dogesh, but it couldn't be, that's why I had the say right. So you can kind of work out in your mind, here's how it happened, but at least you can start with, okay, comments. So the same thing for uh, number 10, I got to hear it plus a comments. So my gut reaction is this must be a nifal. Now I can ask myself, okay, how did I get a shurik in the middle of this? Oh wait, it's a shurik with a vowel. So it's not a shurik, it's a full consonant. How did I get a vav as the first root letter when we don't have vavs as first root letters? A yod, a yod became that letter. So, okay, so this is a nifal from yada. This is a three MS, or excuse me, three MP. 
Okay, nifal. So the dagesh in the vav is actually the nun, or not really, but sort of we pretend it is. What about number five? Ma'ahavim. Yes, it's a mem, so it must be a participle. And what's under the mem? Vogel schwa. Peel, yes, because if it was a pu'al, we would have a, yep, we would have a, uh, either we would have a kibitz or a uh, holum or a shurik or, no, I'm sorry, wrong form. Yes, we would have a kibitz. Sorry, brain fart. We would have a kibitz there, yes. We'll get to the rest of them on Thursday. What about number six? Bataha. Again, a shva is always vocal if it comes immediately after a metheg. So that little line that's after the, the, after the comets, the metheg tells me it's a comets, long vowel, shvas are always vocal after long vowels. So it's not bataha or botha, it's bataha. Well, what do we have at the beginning of the verb? What, what's my preformative? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, so that immediately narrows it down. I'm either dealing with an imperative or a perfect, because yes. those are the only ones without, uh, without preformatives. And I've got an A class followed by a schwa, and I've got a, do I have an imperative ending or do I have perfect ending? Perfect ending. Uh, it's just the marker for three FS. So that's just a three FS perfect ending. Yep, bataha. So the cohortative ending will only show up on imperatives or first person imperfects. Because we don't have, the cohortative is not actually an imperative. We translate it as an imperative, but the cohortative is a first person imperfect because you can't have first person imperatives. Or you will sometimes have a comments hey on imperatives, which it won't be a perfect ending and it won't even be an imperfect ending because there are no hey's as perfect and imperfect endings. But it, there's some that have suggested it's kind of a, an emphatic or a, um, sometimes they call them energic forms. Emphatic just sounds better. So the imperatives are all second person. Correct. Is third person. Yep. And justives are usually shortened forms of imperfects, but you can only see that in certain forms. Sometimes context has to tell you that it's a justive. In, uh, in other languages, other Semitic languages, like Ugaritic, for instance, uh, the, at the end of a verb, you would actually add ana, A N N A, as an energic form. And so some people have suggested that the na is the the all we have left is the ah that that's an energic form in an imperative so if you have an imperative with that what looks like a 3fs ending on it it's i mean it could be an object if it has a mapik uh, or that dogish i keep calling it a dogish it's not a dogish it's a mapik but if you have the if you have that dot in it yes. uh it could be an object but if not then it's just an energic possible we translate it the same um but it, it could be that, that form. So this is just a perfect um, bataka, which means, what's batak? Trust. Yes. Batak, yep. So bataka, she trusts. Um, how about number nine? Yes. Yes. Can we write all that on the test? Sure. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. Yeah, if that helps you think, you're right. Whatever you want in the exam. Yeah, something went into something. I don't know why. So what is the, um, what things don't usually take things? Well, it would be a rash. And okay, a rash. Oh, wait, that's a dollar. Okay. That's a dollar. Yep. Oh, that's fine. Okay. So, and the iron. Does, yeah, iron would not take things, although that's at the end of the word. So there's got to be something that drops off. Yes. Okay, if a nun dropped, it would go in the, we'd have Dalit. What is the root? What roots do you know that end in da? Okay, yada. So we got yada. Is there any reason why we would do something to a yod at the beginning that would give us a seire? Uh, not, you don't even need a dagesh because you have you end up with a yod plus a hirik plus a yod, and so the yod and the hirik have become seire. So you could have yida, I suppose, and in some cases you'll have that. Although not usually with yod, it seems like we get tida, but I think more often we get the yod here at yod becomes a seire. So we get yeda instead of yida with yod here at yod, daladayan. So if we put a yod on the front of this, a yod plus a hirik, what is yod plus a hirik? Which stem is that? Kaler and Nifal, and if it was a Nifal, what would have happened? Yep. Yeah. Or we would have had to have put the Dagesh from the Nun into the Yod, in which case we would get Yida. Or actually be Yida. So yeah, this would be Cal. And because of the guttural at the end, that's where we get the patak from. So instead of yik tol with a guttural, it was yik tal, because that's a uh, that's an i in there, which is a guttural. So that's why we get ye da. How to know, or yada means to know. So this would be he will know. So just cal. Just cal imperfect three ms. Yep. And again, the other way to have gone about this, although we kind of did it that way, was figuring out, okay, what do we not have? We don't have patak, we don't have any vocal schwas, we don't have, you know, the closest thing that we came to was maybe a nifal, but if it was a nifal, then where's my comments? Which again, the comments would have shown up, it would have been ye ya day. Although it might still have been yida, but it, it would have been yiya. And we would have yod, hirik, yod with the dagesh, comets, dalit, whatever my stem vowel would have been. Probably could have been a seire, probably, and an ayan. Seire is close enough to an A that sometimes you can get away with it, sometimes. Um, 
So the fact that I dropped a yod means that all I had was hirik or yod hirik at the beginning. So I can kind of work backwards and figure out, okay, there's nothing else going on here. So why is there nothing else going on here? And I can kind of work back, what would I have possibly stuck at the beginning that would have changed this? Because even if it was just a perfect, which it is, but it, or, or, uh, uh, it's not, it's an imperfect, but even if it was just a perfect, I don't have any stems in the perfect that start with say right. Yep. You, I mean, you can get to the, I only want this area to say no, because it's blank. It's just mm -hmm. a Yep, but and in this I, case, it kind of has lengthened. Yeah. It was a heuric that lengthened to a say, right? It doesn't help us. Right? Yep. Um, how about, um, how about number, um, how about number 12? Mm -hmm. Yep except that I got a shurik on the end. So it's from Yashav. Well, it, the yod would have become part of the vowel. So instead of yish, yishavu, the yod and the here it became yesh, yesh vu. So it's the same thing as the last one. So imperfect. imperfect, except instead of three ms, it's three mp. So if you look at number 13 there, what, what oh. Imperative. The imperative probably would have been shavu. So the first yod would not have Well, theoretically, technically, the first yod is the yod that's there. It's the second yod that dropped. So the first yod is still there, and the second yod is the one that would have dropped. Well, no, the first yod is the performative. So the preformative yod is the one that's still there. The yod that's the first letter of the root, that's the one that disappeared. Right. So I think that the whole thing would have still been gone. The whole thing would have gone, even if so, it was a letter yep, of the first. Both yods would have been gone because the one first root yod would have already left when you formed the imperfect. Then you drop the second one. So my guess is you would get shavu. So my question was, when you drop the second one, I don't think it comes back. No. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it stays away. If it did come back, which I don't think it did, but if it did, it would be yishvu. But that is really confusing because that looks similar to yod plus a hirik plus a shurik is the three MP. And the whole goal of Hebrew was in the way they spoke it and the way they wrote it was to make it clear what the forms were. So as annoying as all these symbols are, they thought they were making it easy, which is hilarious. But they thought, you know, that this is, again, this is like reading the dictionary pronunciation in the dictionary with all the weird symbols which again, Webster's thinks it's making it really easy for us. Although we had a big debate at dinner tonight over whether or not it's hammock or hammock. Because according to my daughter, Webster says that it's hammock. And yet you can't really say that Webster's was an idiot because then that undermines your children's 
uh, confidence in the dictionary, but whatever. I think it's a hammock. Uh, but, you know, same idea of we're reading the pronunciation guide, so they're not going to deliberately make it weird, although they've done that anyway. But, you know, they're not, they're not trying to do that. So my guess is instead of yishvu, it would have been shavu, and they would have dropped the yay altogether for the imperative. Although it would have been, uh, well, it would have been two, two M S, uh, two, yeah, two M P is what it would have been with the uh, Tav. Um, so, yeah, so it would have been Teshavu. Would have been what it was in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, in the normal imperfect form two M P. Teshvu or Teshavu. And then the, the yay, all that performative stuff drops, and you're just left with Shavu. That's the one nice thing about imperatives. And to some degree, well, the cow is the only infinitive construct that looks like an imperative. But usually when you're just like, holy cow, there's word, there's letters missing. You're you're usually left with uh, yeah. I I brought the wrong thing with me, because this one this is the translation I chose not to use for the exam, uh, but I accidentally double copied my paper, so it's on the back here anyway. I meant to bring the other one because the uh, the other one has some imperatives in it, but they're so obvious that they're imperatives because it's it just becomes very um, almost becomes very almost like you're stuttering yes. rather than um, uh, here. I'll I'll. Uh, one of my favorite uses of the uh, imperatives is in uh, Genesis 12. Um, so right after uh, um, Abraham has been blessed and told he's going to be a, a whatever to all the nations, um, um, he ends up getting um, um, Pharaoh in trouble. Um, so Pharaoh tells him basically, uh, in the King James version, now, therefore behold thy wife, take her and go thy way, which sounds really eloquent in the King James version. Uh, but in the Hebrew it's Hine, behold, uh, and Ishtaka kak valik. It's just, it's very boom, boom. I mean, it almost sounds like one word. Ishtaka, your wife, cock, take, valek, go. So Pharaoh's a little peeved at the moment. Your wife, take, go. We kind of smooth it out of, behold, your wife, take her and go thy way. But it's you, wife, go. And it's just very, she's got that staccato, very blunt uh, use of the imperative. And that's, usually it's easy to see that because it's the, it's the shortened form, which is why a jussive, which is a third masculine or a third feminine, will often contract when you're using an imperative with kind of a, um, with kind of that, that you know, an imperfect third person is kind of an imperative force. Um, you know, let them praise the Lord. It's kind of an imperative force, but it's a third person form. So we translate it as let them, which sounds like you let them, but it's really them praise is the imperative. You're commanding this third party. So it'll oftentimes shorten. Um, so in, um, you know, instead of uh, hallelujah, for they will praise, it's halu, praise, let them praise. It just, it shortens. And so the, the giveaway in justives and in imperatives is we've got less letters that we're dealing with here. So if you look down and you just saw shavu, you probably have a pretty good indication that it's an imperative, especially because there'd only be one vowel. You'd have a shva and one vowel. Not shavu, be shvu, which 
just would probably indicate, huh, I probably have an imperative here to MP. Um, let's see here. Um, how about 17? Ali, uh, 17, yeah, Ale. What do you see? Probably. Mm -hmm. What is the stem? Say, Ray, probably means imperative. Do we know what the stem is? What do we see? Uh, it has a patak, but the patak would be under a preformative in the hyphial. Because even in the imperative, we have a hey, hak teal in the hyphial. This is just a lay. There's no preformative. I would assume the root is Allah. Allah, okay. What jumps out at you as, hmm, that's odd. Dagesh and the Lamed. And that would be the second group, so it has to be PL. A PL, yep. PL imperative. PL imperative, and I said, yeah, probably, when you said it's probably an imperative, because the PL imperative is also the form of PL infinitive construct and infinitive absolute. Yep. So, uh, Ale. The, uh, those are the ones that trip me up. So I, I, uh, I took the exam on Sunday afternoon for the fun of it. Uh, I had, I, similar to what I did with the midterm, I pieced together portions of various exams that I have on hand. Uh, and exam, I made part of my own exam two years ago, so I took part of that but I, I wanted to just make sure that I've covered everything that's on the exam. And the ones that trip me up the most um, are, are the ones like 17, where it's a PL, but I keep wanting to call it something else because it throws me that there's a potock there. Um, so, you know, if it was a lot, and again was potock, Lamed plus a dagesh, and then holam vav tav. What would that be? I have a third hay verb that ends in oat, but I got a dagesh in the lamed and a patak under that first root letter, a lot. Which ones have dageshes in the second root letter? Oh, that was different. I haven't moved enough, apparently. Yes. So PL, and then if it ends in oat, with a third hay. Mm -hmm. If a third hay ends in oat, it's always infinitive construct. But what throws me is the patak under the first root letter. But again, as you look at the chart, it's katel, 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 makatel, katel, katel. But again, I don't think of ka when the name of the root is p, p ale. But one of the things that's somewhat confusing in the p ale is that the only time that it's ever p ale is in the perfect, but only in the three MS. Every other part of the PL perfect is pa ale, which is really annoying. Just call it pa ale, but no, it's gotta be difficult to be a PL. So that, that throws me. So when I took it on, on Sunday, those were the ones that I missed. I actually have a derivative in my notes, CL slash pa ale. That's good. 
Yes. It is only in the three MS perfect that it's P ale. The rest of the perfect paradigm, it is pot ale. Yep. So yeah, we should almost call it pot ale, P, P ale, pot ale. Um, it, it, it's funny because we're, we're not opposed to having contrived names. So sometimes, um, uh, sometimes you'll hear people call it a polale and the Polale is a P-ale, biconsonantal or geminate, where the second letter has come, has doubled, as is often the case. So it's just a normal P-ale, but it so takes people by surprise that we've got the geminate and the biconsonantal actually having three root letters, that we come up with this whole new name for it, the polale, which they don't even, I don't even think, I don't even think he mentions it in his book. Most of the books that I've read do not, but th that's what a lot of people call it, the polale and the pulale and, and, but yet for whatever reason, we're very picky about the fact that, no, it's gotta be a PL. And it would probably do students a lot of good if we called it the PL pile form because it, it is not consistently adhering. So, uh, those are the ones that throw me off. In fact, if you flip back to 281 or 84 or whatever page we were on. Uh, number 16, which is on page 279. We've got halot, which again is a PL. Dagesh in the Lamed, Patak under the Chait, it's a third He, Chala, and it's an infinitive construct. Uh, which again is just annoying. Um, and in fact, that one I think could even be, well, no, it had to be a it would have to be a uh, third hay because of the oat. Um, the, um, so the, the geminates will sometimes add in the, uh, they'll double that second root letter. Uh, but if they did that, it would be halal or halal and we would have two lamids. So the fact that we have oat, again, is the diagnostic for the, for the third hay, not for the, uh, yeah. Um, let's see. Let's do number, let me see if I can find the one I'm looking for. Um, Hmm. That's actually in the last five minutes. Let's flip back to page 81. Yeah, do you have 81 still? We're going way back. Yes. 81. 81, you don't have 81? Okay. So on page 81, number, number five on page 81, Arona. I'm sorry, a row new, not a rona, a row new. Um, 
Yep. That's interesting. Uh huh. Yes. So when will I get a holum vav that will show back up in between the second root letter and the suffix? Uh, it does not. Actually, it has to do with the fact that it's a geminate. So, arar. Yes, arar. So this would be um, we cursed. Um, no, he cursed us. Right? No, it was right the first time. We cursed aronu. Shows up in Geminids. Geminids. Yep, annoyingly so, but yes. Yep. Um, so. I think they showed up the home of law shows in Geminids, but it usually, oh no, that's okay. Well, it'll often do it if you have a, um, a suffix. So if you add an object at the end, um, well, just clicked on that and nothing happened. Ah, there we go. Um, yeah, so um, again, before Nun and Tav, the second letter of the Geminate will become a Holom Vav. Yep before those strong endings. Now, oftentimes it will place a dagesh in that second letter as kind of a warning flag. Hey, hey, we lost something, but we can't because it's a rash. That might be even more confusing though, because it's so starts off like that and then it puts a dagesh in the middle. Yeah, you might think it's a PL form. Yeah. Yep. Um, Look at number um, six. So I'm guessing this is. It is. Mm -hmm. um, so what would have been in between the nun and the samic? Noose, yep, to flee. Yep. So in the perfect, you will always have just the comments. The because remember with biconsonantal verbs, those hollow verbs, we don't have the vowel unless we're in the infinitive construct or occasionally in the imperative or the imperfect. So in the perfect, you never see the middle vowel. It'll show back up in the often in the imperfect. Um, yakum or Janus, or Janos, or however they want to. Um, so my, my recommendation, and I, again, I'll print out that sheet for, um, for Thursday of here's what I suggest you actually learn. I've got a little chart. Rather than saying learn these things, I've actually got it on the chart of here's what you need to learn. Um, the, uh, so I would recommend that. Um, I would recommend um, that you study uh, weak verbs in the cal because that's where the most changes take place. So that would be um, in the workbook exercises. That was 81. <laughs> no. So 73 and 81 are weak verbs in the cal. And then um, in the imperfect, a lot of them, 95, he divides the, up the exercises by kind. So 95, 101, 107, 111. I think that's it. Oh, nope. 
115, 119. Uh, so the, basically the Cal weak verbs in your exercises. So what you will get on the exam is a, you will get a bunch of weak verbs all in the Cal stem to identify. Uh, I don't think any of them have objects. So let me double check that since I can. I don't think about it. Yet. I don't think about it. Uh, this is it. okay. So we have fifty vocab. Uh, and then I ask you to give me the five endings for the third hay verbs. Uh, and then there are um, 15 parsing. It does not appear that any of these have objects on them. Although he says, identify the objects, but there aren't any objects. Uh, then there's another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. another 15 parsing that is um, a mix of all the different stems, all the different forms. A couple of them have objects on them. Uh, there's a translation exercise. It's a fairly well-known section of scripture, so I don't think you'll have any problem with that. Uh, and then a final section of parsing that is all, all cal verbs, but they're all weak. So I don't, aside from just the couple that are in the parsing that I put together, they're not a lot that have objects, which it, it's, it's just kind of unfortunate the way that we do. Uh, we need about probably one more week to class to do objects well, because we do Cal, then we do objects, then we do six other stems, then we have the exam. And even in Van Pelt's book and his workbook, his final parsing exam that we've been working through, none of those have objects, which annoys me. But, you know, those pages that I gave you and said, hey, practice these 279 and following, none of those have objects on them, which I find very odd, but. Yeah, you would think that he would, but he. Yeah, honestly, the hardest thing was just getting the exam turned in by Thursday because I know that Joel wants to push up his time to get his classes done. Yeah, I. That, that's, I think that's probably the hardest part for me is so it's cumulative. I'm trying to review my vocabulary. I'm going to have a last class on Tuesday that won't be too bad, but still, I'm going to need to learn. And then you can kind of complete some of your parsing and then you've got a day and a half. Oh my day that's, day. that's really the only part of yeah, it. Yeah. Well, the, else I mean, the nice thing about Hithpael that we do on Tuesday is you'll probably already be able to figure out which ones are Hithpael already. I plan on going through most of them before we get Hithpael because I'll be able to figure out why. I have no idea what this is, so I'm just not going to get it. Well, if it starts with hit, Oh. That's usually a good clue. And there's a couple exceptions, but yeah. they're, they're pretty obvious. I think you'll be able to figure it out. But yeah, yeah. I feel like there's enough time. Yeah. If, if you, I mean, you could do all 165 parsings 
but I, I don't know that you need to do that many. Yeah, because I, I mean, they're just so, they're just so similar to each other. I need to go back to the workbook pages. I don't want to lose some anyway, so the worst thing for me is getting confused any further than the work page. Let's switch the tops around the head. Yeah. Which ones are on the end and which ones are off the sides? And some yep. of these I just I look at it and I have a lot of loss. So mm -hmm. I'm just saying yep. it's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. I think what I may do. I, I may give you that chart on Thursday for the, you know, here's what you should memorize. But I think I may also put together a little Quizlet thing. That's just, so if I see a vocal schwa followed by a Patak, what am I? And will it be on Canvas or are you going to link? It'll link on Canvas, yeah. Because you really, I mean, when we put it in this form, it gets a little confusing to have all the cattails and your cattails and muck cattails and you know, if I'm a verb and I start with a mem, what am I? I'm a participle. If I, you know, if I am a mem with a vocal schwa followed by a U-class vowel, I'm a puau. If I'm, so you know, I, some of that I think makes it a little easier. And again, some of these, like even the one that we did earlier, the, uh, the, the, what was it? Uh, a lot or halot of, there are a number of different steps to get to that final form. But it's probably best just to remember the basic ones of, there's a dagesh forte in the second root letter, and there's a patak under the first root letter. And then I can kind of figure the rest out as I go. The vocab for Hebrew exegesis that we need to learn for the first day of class. Mm -hmm. because yeah, I'm, just, I'm, I'm rethinking that. I was just, oh, I was about to ask, are those going to have to learn the four or five hundred that we're up to um, for this exam? Are those, are they basically the same words? Mm -hmm. Are they are going to be in that? Stuff we've learned this beginning. Oh yeah, yeah. You've learned you've learned everything up through hundred. We're only like not even halfway through that box. Mm -hmm. No, the box goes down. I think fifty. Oh. You'll be through most of the box by the end of exegesis. Where the box that has a thousand parts in it, I think mm -hmm. we have the first what? Five hundred. Yeah. And the funny thing is, this last two um, lists. 